Hi, welcome to Modeling and Simulation of Dynamical Systems at Czech Technical University in Prague. In previous videos, we recapitulated some basic formats of mathematical models of dynamical systems. I'm pretty much confident that you were familiar with most of them, for sure with state space models and transfer functions. These are perfectly popular and suitable for control design. However, in this uh, video, I would like to argue that they are actually not quite suitable for modeling, especially when you want to model more complex systems by composing them from some subsystems and components. The culprit here, the reason for this deficiency, is that uh, causality was already fixed. By that I mean that the roles or the variables that uh, participate here were already classified as the inputs and the outputs. Let's consider the block diagram over here, where uh, what we mean by this is that the input signal is transformed by the system into the output signal. That's why we call these models like state space or transfer functions signal-based models. Similarly, if instead we just look at the equations, for instance this uh, output equation of a general state space model. Here the trouble is that we tend to interpret the equality sign as the equation, but what we actually want to say by this is that we take the state, the input and the time, we plug them into the nonlinear function g and we produce the output. We write the right hand side into the left hand side. So perhaps it would be more appropriate to use some other symbol, not equality, either something used in Asian languages like Pascal or uh, this left arrow, just to emphasize, uh, to reinforce this uh, idea of assignment. Hence these models are also called assignment based models. And now let me explain what's actually wrong with having the causality fixed, having the roles uh, of the variables already fixed as uh, either inputs or outputs. So for that uh, let's consider an example of a motor. We will consider voltage as the input and the uh, angle as the output and we will also consider a rotational load, say some disk, where the natural input would be uh, con the torque and the output could be say the angle. Now what we would like to do is we'd like to model a situation where the load is connected to the rotor shaft. But how? How on earth can I do that? Can I do anything like, uh, say, just connecting these two blocks by by a signal, by by a line here? Well, no way, no way. It's not that easy. Let's see. Uh, at quite some detail where the troubles come from. For that we will develop uh, detailed uh, models of the motor and the load. So the motor can be viewed, the electrical side of the motor can be viewed as an interconnection of the resistance, inductance and a controlled source of voltage where the voltage generated depends on the angular velocity. And similarly its mechanical part is just a rotating shaft where the torque is uh, given by the current. Now for the for the uh, rotational, uh, so we can now rewrite this into a block diagram like this. First we transform the voltage into the current using the impedance uh, of the winding, then the current is tra transformed into the torque by multiplying by the torque constant, then from torque we get angular acceleration and after one integration we obtain angular velocity and after another integration we obtain the angle. Now, uh, if there is some uh, friction, mechanical friction in the system, we model it by, by a block. The, say for simplicity, we'll consider a linear friction. So this generates a torque which is subtracted from the torque generated by the motor. And similarly, uh, what's derived from the angular velocity is also the, the so-called electromotive force or simply induced voltage that acts against uh, the applied voltage. And it's derived through the same a constant k. Now a model of uh, of a disk is again a second or second Newton's law. It's in its rotational version. So the torque gives uh, an angular acceleration just by multiplying or actually dividing by a constant. And then after one integration, we obtain angular velocity, and another integration gives us angle. Now, how could these two models that we so carefully developed, say we have already encoded them in simulating, how could these two be combined? No way just to interconnect the, uh, the, the signals here. Instead, in fact, the right answer in this particular case is that we can simply uh, 
change the moment of inertia. So we add the moment of inertia of the rotor shaft and the moment of inertia of the load. However, this is certainly not a systematic procedure, right? Uh, so instead, what we are after, what we would like to find is some framework in which we could interconnect the motor and the load in this simple way. And preferably, we could we would like to have it in uh, multiple domains. So we would like to connect the motor with the battery as well. So now we need to think about what will be the interpretation of these two links. Note that they come from different physical domains, right? And it turns out that a perfect interpretation for this is as an energy exchange or what we call power bond. Indeed, power or energy are uh, perfectly suitable for modeling in multiple physical domains because their units, that means watts and joules, are perfect universal currency. In the next video we are going to elaborate more on this concept of a power bond and it, this will lead us to a very efficient modeling methodology based on the so-called power bond graphs or just bond graphs.